What's up YouTube? So if you haven't seen my video on what phase is, I'm going to post a link in the description. In that video, I introduced a plugin called Forward Audio Sample Delay. And I promised you guys that I would give you like a full rundown of both the like free version called Sample Delay and the paid for version Timeline and show you the differences and stuff and why I think that the paid for version is actually really, really worth it and pretty much changed my life. And it's got a couple of features that are super cool for specifically for bass lines. There's a couple of things, you know, um, that will deal with various different ways of creating bass lines that I want to show you guys. But it's also cool when using hardware synths with a DAW setup for various reasons that I want to show you guys. So anyway, let's dive in and have a look. So the plugins are by Forward Audio, and um, you can check them out on the website here. Um, the, the ones I want to talk about today are Timeline and Sample Delay. So Timeline is obviously the paid for version that I mentioned in the previous one. It goes for 69 euros. It's incredibly useful, and I'm going to show you guys why. I'm also going to run through the differences between the paid for and the free version. So in essence, it's a time manipulation plugin. And you may be thinking, why is that so important? But I'm going to kind of get into the nitty gritty a little bit later. Um, but first up, I want to address the fact that like most DAWs have time delays and stuff built into the actual track. The problem is when you adjust it, it's either kind of so small increments that it doesn't really make all that much of a difference. Except if you kind of keep going and keep going and you end up like, you know, scrolling your mouse off the screen or you actually have to like, go like this, but then at that point, it's too much time differences that it's audible. So I kind of find that most DAW's sample uh, delay section is pretty much unusable, except if you know the exact amount of samples or milliseconds or something that you want to actually delay. But furthermore, the problem with that is then if you use any time-based effects like LFO tool doing sidechain, and then you delay the track, there's going to be some weird things going on. So Forward Audio Sample Delay and Forward Audio's Timeline are plugins that attempt to kind of address those issues. But as some of you may know, time essentially is phase, as I've explained in a previous video. If you've got, if you've got two waveforms at a similar pitch and you, you manipulate their time, you start to do things with the phase. And this can be very helpful in situations where you've got like a kick and bass which kind of sounds like it's going a little bit out of phase. And you can actually very easily pick that up on an oscilloscope. And for this example, I'm going to use LFO tool and I'm going to show you uh, a quick example, but I'm actually saving the kind of rundown for the creation of this kick and bass for a more advanced tutorial that I'm going to get to. But for the process of this tutorial, I'm just going to kind of break it down quickly for you guys. The importance that phase and time can have in the low end of your track. So first up, the major differences between sample delay and time align are time align allows you to go back in time. So in examples where, say for example, you've got a lot of processing on your channel, there are always going to be ever so slight amount of delay. Um, I'm going to get to that later on in the video, but you know, in examples with lining up phase in kick and bass, I found that it's often the baseline that has to shift backwards ever so slightly. So, you know, you could, I guess, get the, the free version sample delay and maybe delay the kick until you see it's perfect on the actual meter, put them in a group and then delay the track delay, the group by that amount of milliseconds backwards or something. But that's a little bit of a convoluted process. So that's why, you know, first up, that's why I highly recommend getting uh, time align, but also the fact that it's it's more accurate. So check this out. On sample delay, you'll notice that you've only got increments of actual, you know, full samples, where on time align, you've got increments down to the point triple zero. And if you hold alt shift, you can actually manipulate in such fine sort of increments that you almost can't even see those differences on the scope let alone hear those differences. And, you know, when lining up your sub frequencies, like your roll off from a kick 
and the first subfrequency of a bass line, you know, these really, really tiny increments can make the world of difference. Um, you know, some may argue, but I think, you know, knowing the tools that are going to most easily get you the ability to fix those issues is beneficial because it means that you're not going to have to worry about it. You can quickly like look at the scope, check how it's doing, and then fix it using a very easy tool like Timeline. So another couple of features that Timeline has over sample delay is the fact that you can group multiple instances of the plugin together. And this is very handy if you do like layered bass lines. So in this example, I do do a layered bass line, but it's within a single uh, preset in Serum. But what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to split it up onto two layers and I'm gonna show you how beneficial, you know, grouping two instances can be um, and getting, you know, super fine with the actual, uh, uh, manipulating the phase to get that kind of perfect uh, mix between the kick and bass. What I'm going to do to start off is I'm going to default timeline to zero samples. So there's no like offset happening here at the moment. And I'm going to play you guys this kick and bass example that I've prepared and we're going to have a look at it on the scope. So we're probably not going to see all that much happening because there's a kind of uh, because there's a saw wave, it's quite hard to kind of distinguish what's going on there. But I want to show you guys something quick. So let's just quickly have an example. Uh, listen to the example. I've kind of uh, explained the basics of splitting the fundamental and the upper harmonics uh, in a bass line in previous tutorials. I'll uh, try to remember to link those in the description as well. And that's basically what I've done here. As you can see, I've got a sine wave and then I've got a saw with the sine wave canceled. So it does the kind of like opposite shape over here. So what I'll do quickly is um, I'm going to actually play the bass line soloed and show you what these oscillators look like individually on this oscilloscope and a spectrum analyzer just to get a nice view of what's happening with each of those oscillators. Okay, so why is this important? Because not only do we have like individual envelope control over like each of those, so you don't need to use like an envelope, a multiband envelope shaper or something to get like the perfect punch from your low end, but also it makes it easier to phase align like the sub roll off from a kick with that first kind of bass note, because now you can just mute the upper harmonics and then, you know, just have a look at what this sign looks like while lining up the phases. Um, so check this out quickly. So you see here, there's this little wiggle and that's not a complete sort of sign cycle. And that's because there's phasing happening between this roll off of the kick and that first bass note. So how we can fix that is using time align. So let's pop this open and let's manipulate this time backwards until we've got what looks like the most even sine curve on this roll off over here. And now when you mix the saw back in, now you get like the perfect kind of low end phase with a sort of stable, you know, saw mid range and highs um, on the top. So this is the tool that I use to kind of correct the phase in my low end. And I'm gonna show you quickly why I think it's so effective 
You may not hear it uh, on sort of regular headphones. You might need some pretty high-end headphones or a good monitoring setup to kind of hear the big difference, or you may hear it. Um, sometimes it's hard to tell. You know, sometimes even in a good studio, just looking at a scope will definitely kind of benefit. Sometimes you won't hear those phasing issues um, in the sub range, at least. So what I'm going to do is let's play this example full range, and I'm going to turn the plugin on and off so we can hear a difference like you know, phase corrected and without the phase correction. And you guys can be the judge whether you want to use this technique or not. So the audible experience might not be the same for you guys, but what I'm hearing on my side is the kick sounds a lot tighter, you know, when without that phase uh, correction happening, it almost sounds like the kick's sort of boominess kind of loses a bit and then f kind of extends, a, like sustains a bit longer. So for those who maybe didn't hear the difference after my explanation, maybe try here again. Like I mentioned in the phase video, bear in mind the human ear can only really start to determine, um, as far as I know, it can only really start to determine delays of about 25 to 35 milliseconds. And here we're only delaying a sample by, you know, minus 3.679 milliseconds. So the amount that's being delayed is, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to bet on it that it's indistinguishable but the audio difference that it makes in terms of like how much it gels that low in together, in my opinion, is absolutely massive. So what I want to do quickly is duplicate the Serum instance and I'm going to mute the oscillator on one and do the converse on the other. So, I mean, this is for examples if, for if you don't have Serum and you want to create like a layered baseline or something, but you want the phase on both of your layers to be relative. So now let's open both instances of Timeline here. This is the mid-high, mid-his, mid-highs, and this is the sub. So now what we can do is let's put them into a group. So we've put both into group one and we put group mode on. So let's actually pull up that LFO tool again so we can get a visual um, of what's going on. And hopefully it's going to be the same result as, you know, a single plugin on, you know, that single instance of Serum that we had going. Um, so now we're going to have to actually um, edit the um, samples again back to where we had it. But... It's fine because the, the chances are if you go if you're doing this route, you wouldn't have done it before anyway. So I mean, like I find that this is so precisional that you're able to quickly see this method is so precisional that you're able to quickly see and get it back to that kind of like ideal spot uh, very easily. So check this out. Anyway, you get the idea. So I want to show you guys another example of how handy this plugin can be. So we've got our kick and bass and everything going. Let's add some percussions in here. And let's say, for example, I want to plug in a hardware synth. So here I've got a SH-101. I've got the MIDI clock sending out of Cubase. And I've got a MIDI to CV and gate generator that then 
sends the clock out to the SH-101. So this is also handy in examples when you've got like actual MIDI synths and stuff like that. So what I want to do is, or what I've already done, is sent all my sort of DAW based channels, like my kick and bass group, my percussions group and all of that into a group here that I call DAW group. So now I've put time align onto this group and what this allows me to do. So here you don't actually have to use time align. Let's say for example, use sample delay because it's the free version. And we don't need the accuracy for this example because what we're going to do is we're going to delay the audio that's in the project so that it syncs up with the synths clock. So I kind of want to show you something quick. Cool, so we've got audio coming through. But now the problem is it's not synced because there's obviously like plugins loaded on the channel. Um, my audio card has a high sample rate because the project is large, there's a bunch of plugins loaded. So there's always going to be that little bit of, you know, delay if you're recording in hardware instruments. And let's deal with that using sample delay. First up, the easiest way uh, to do this is going to be to get like a percussive element, like obviously like a kick drum and get that going. And so what we want to do is we want to play the kick and the SH-101. So this is obviously not going to that DAW group. So we're not delaying the 101's audio track, but we're de delaying the DAW group. Um, and I've actually also got LFO tool loaded up onto the stereo output on my mixer in Cubase. So I'll show you why. Here, what we're going to do is we're going to set this volume to zero and we can zoom the interface up a little bit, turn these down. And you've got this grid here, and this is particularly helpful for lining stuff up in time, as well as obviously phase. Well, that's exactly what it is, just obviously in much smaller increments. But this is helpful for lining up stuff like external instrument clocks to your DAW. So check this out. So what we can do is uh, we can play both while we adjust this sample delay. So um, one thing to remember is you've got the ability to change the minimum and maximum amount of delay samples are being applied. So here, obviously, I think my sample rate on my sound card is set to like 2000. So it's, I'm going to need a lot more than 480 delay here. So let's start by just putting it on like 2000 and see where this takes us. My computer must be running really slow because I'm obviously video capturing as well. So here, once I've kind of lined up that kick with the rest of these hits, um, you can adjust this offset over here. Um, and that kind of offsets the entire, uh, uh, obviously, audio range or at least the visible range that's on the scope. Um, and then, f then I further like line up these 16ths just to make every sure everything is 100%. Um, then we can also mute the kick and just make sure again. But what we can do is just play it again. That is like bang on the money. That is exactly what we want. So yeah, what we've done is we've lined up this age old SH-101's clock to sync with Cubase and let's play with it a bit.
Awesome, how useful is that? So yeah, like I said, super, super useful plugin. Both the free version, but I highly recommend going for the paid for version for that like really precise phase correction and stuff, specifically with like your low end kick and bass kind of stuff uh, with side trance and any sort of electronic music, in fact. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. A big thanks to Forward Audio for sending me these plugins. Uh, Timeline is definitely finding its way into literally every project I'm doing. If it's either like outboard stuff that I'm syncing with within the box stuff, or if it's like these kind of really in-depth phase correction stuff, um, literally every project I've got it loaded somewhere. So big thanks to you guys at Forward Audio for sending me the plugin. And let me know what you think in the comments. As always, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. See you guys next time.